All right, back inside the Bud Light pregame tailgate. Special guest pirate picker this week, Brian Medor. How do you follow up Danny Beal and Kevin Monroe with Brian Medor? You it's don't. A natural progression. <laughs> not a, that's not a progression. <laughs> don't insult Kevin like that. My goodness. Uh, Medor, good to uh, to talk some football with you, man. And Always. How, how about the 2 0 start for the Pirates? You know what? It, it's, it, despite the turnovers from last week, and I know you guys have beaten that to yeah. death this week, but. I really, I, we left probably 21 to 28, 24 points on the board. We whooped the Monarchs' ass. And I really think that that, um, that game was, was not indicative of the score. When you turn the ball over, especially in the red zone like that, obviously you can't make those mistakes uh, moving forward. But if you're going to beat up on an opponent, I know we're going to pick the Vatek Old Dominion, Old Dominion game in a minute, but I was not impressed with Old Dominion. Yeah, same. Uh, we'll get back to ECU and App State in a moment. But let's start with the team, Brown. We watched this game during the pregame last week. I'm not sure if you had a chance to catch any of it, but Tulane had yeah, State on the Yeah, I saw the, ropes, the highlights. They had them. And, and some people say a bit of a uh, a rough call at the end on a pass, an offensive pass interference, and Tulane should have at least tied, maybe won the game. Uh, doesn't get any easier for them this week. They go to Oklahoma. They got the emotional letdown. Can they get up again and try to pull it a, an upset this week, or is this one that Oklahoma takes care of business in? I think you're going to see exactly what you saw last week. You're going to see a Tulane team that's going to play them tough, tight. Yes. I think it'll be a relatively low-scoring game. For that reason, I think they'll cover, was it two touchdown, 13 and a half, 14, whatever, it is, whatever the spread is. I think Tulane will keep it close, but I think Oklahoma wins. How about the backyard brawl? For some reason, I remember this being a bit of a bigger deal uh, used to be. years ago. And now yeah. it's uh, a bit of an afterthought. Some of that is probably what happened to West Virginia week one against Penn State, where I was really anticipating that game, and Penn State whipped them. So uh, West Virginia at Pittsburgh. Midor, who you got in the backyard brawl? I'm taking the Panthers in this one. I'm going mm. Pitt. Uh, yeah. Anytime we can go anti-West Virginia, I mean. <laughs> I'm like, I hate that great, place. You know, there's a lot of stereotypes that, that – People will say aren't true. Greg Hudson says everything about every going bit to of a it. West Virginia game every bit of is it. true. Uh, so somebody <laughs> told me you got a duck if you're doing sideline. I did sideline for WIT and our broadcast there, and someone threw a battery at me. It, from the, so, it came from the stands. That, that is, is truth. That, okay, you have lived it. They moon you when you roll in. It's nothing. It's yeah, I lived it. I didn't. I did not care for that place. All right. Well, uh, I hear Corvallis is nice. <laughs> Coach O's been there a few times, right? Is that right? He probably uh, is. He's been. I know at least once. He, it seemed like he was out there for a month uh, for the the regional, regional. And super regional. Yeah. Uh, Oregon and Oregon State uh, going on. I love that this game's going on and Washington Washington State's going on. The conferences are wacky, but at least we're keeping some rivalries and things like that. Uh, but Oregon Oregon State Oregon has looked very shaky the first couple weeks. Uh, two and O versus two and O. Does Oregon finally wake up and I think say, so. all right, we're the Ducks? I think the Ducks <laughs> win it. I, I like the quarterback. I, I, you know, number eight, man. I mean, a guy's number eight, Troy Aikman, in my heart from uh, growing up watching the Cowboys. But I'm going with um, I'm going with Oregon in this one. It, to me, it's like they are just bored, and now yeah. they play a real team. Yeah. We'll yeah. see, though. We'll see. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll see. I think they put up points, and they win. All right, Mike Elko, year one at Texas A&M. Uh, Billy Napier, his final year at Florida, it appears. <laughs> could be his final game. It could be. Uh, Texas A&M at Florida in the swamp, Meador. All right, so if you look at what the history has been, A&M's not done really well in September on the road. Florida has. But this is not the same Florida team of old. So I, I did, when I wrote it down, I was like, when you sent it to me, I was like, I hate to do this. Uh, I'm a, this would be a close game. I think Florida covers, but they lose. I think Texas A&M nips them by a field goal. <clears throat> I do this thing where I try to outsmart people that are way smarter than me. <laughs> it's like taking NC State versus Tennessee because nobody's doing it. Yeah. Taking Michigan versus Texas. I did that last minute with Florida against Miami, and oh my How'd god, how'd that work out? It was bad. <laughs> Meador, where does the swamp rank amongst places? I enjoyed been? going there. It was a, it, it was, it was a neat place to be. It was a little older than I expected, as far as like when I went to Fenway. You know, you go to an older park like that. You 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 walk in with this. You got this idea of what it might be, and I walked in. I was like, this is like a big minor league park. This place is is old. Yeah. It's, the 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 seats are tiny, um, and everything is old about it. Um, Gainesville, I can't say the swamp was was exactly. That may not be a good analogy, but um, it, I mean it's it's a box checked. You know, I've been to some of the bigger ones. I, there were several that I wanted to go to, but I always wanted to go to the swamp and see it. But once I got there, it didn't blow me away. But it was it was still it's still you know it's a big time SEC environment. Our pirate picker is. Brian. And we should have won that game. My goodness, that was the Blake Kim Blake Kim ball Kim slips out of the hand. Left he had two he had Zay and Davon Grayson open. 
Our buddy Bryce Williams had an amazing yeah. last drive. He yeah. Was, he was about dead. Bryce is a trip, man. Could barely breathe, he, <laughs> he said on that last drive. That dude makes me laugh, man. He's so funny. He is. Uh, he's naturally funny. Yes, he with, is. Without trying. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Colorado at Colorado State. Matt Rule can coach some damn college football. So I don't know what happened in the NFL. He can coach college football. They put the beat down, Nebraska did, on Colorado. So they are trying to get off the mat against Colorado State. You remember this game from last year, Meador? No. It was wild. Uh, back and forth, total. I don't know if they combined. I think they combined for over 100 points. I'll have to look it up. Uh, but how about this year at Colorado State? Can Prime and uh, company get off the mat here? <sighs> I'm so tired of him, man. And yeah. I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm a cowboy guy, and I appreciated his time there. But I'm so tired of this Coach Prime nonsense. I'm taking Colorado State just, just cause. Um, it was forty three thirty five in overtime mm. last year, uh, and they scored yeah twenty one in the fourth quarter. It got, it got uh, good late. Um, that well, if it was, it was a late game, I'm usually putting the coaches show together. I can't. Watch I don't know anything, if this was so. a late Friday or a late or Saturday. Saturday, but I remember watching it, and it was late. Uh, it might have been a late Friday before a noon game or something, okay. so you were probably out. Um, I was thinking about it. So, Dion, who do you? I was going to ask who do you associate Dion with as far as NFL teams. I think you associate Dion with Dion. Like, yeah, he no, did, I, he, he that's one hundred percent right. Yeah. Uh, do you just, do you put him in the Falcons? Nah. I mean, he was with the Falcons and the Braves at the same time. Do you put him with the Forty ers I mean, you certainly don't put him with the Redskins. If anything, I would say Dallas. Dallas. I guess. I mean, he won. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I would say it's a toss up between the 49ers and Dallas because he won championships and uh, was also a Raven. So mm -hmm. Sure was yeah. toward the end there. Yep. All right, uh, you Brian said you were not impressed with old. I think Vatek. Uh, I talked to Coach Mack earlier about uh, Vatek and his expectations of them this year. I think they're going to steamroll Old Dominion. I really do. I don't think Old Dominion showed me anything last week. We we should have blown them out by three touchdowns. I got to believe Vatek is going to do that. Midor, between the video game that came out this year, the expanded college football playoff, and Coach Mack joining <laughs> us every Tuesday on the show, uh, my love for college football has been reinvigorated. Because Coach Mack. A, a lot of it yeah. is because yeah. he said, hey, I, I don't know. I, I'm not talking NFL. Like, if y'all want to do it, you can, but I'm not talking it. So we dedicate an entire hour every Tuesday to college football. And it's got me way more into it. it when he's up, he's so knowledgeable, and yeah. it, and he, college in general, he's knowledgeable yeah. about it all. Obviously, being a basketball coach, but some of his stories, you know, he wrote his book, and I say, hey, man, you left all the good stuff. Like the, some of the stories you've told, he said, well, I really can't reveal some of those stories, but yeah. such a smart, and he knows, he, he, you could talk NFL with him, and he would sit here and he could BS his way through it, sure, and you wouldn't know, but he doesn't want to do that. He he's got a passion about it when he talks about college, hundred percent, or NASCAR. Yep, yeah, that too. Yeah. All right, Midor, App State has not just beat ECU. I feel like they've bullied ECU the last couple of times. Uh, so last year, if you remember, we went into the fourth quarter only down eight. So yeah. and it was and you got to remember that game. Flynn threw three picks. Was not good. Um, did they bully us in the trenches a little bit? One can make that am argument. I, am I thinking I mean, more of twenty one with yes, the bullying? This? Yes. Okay. Because last Fire. year, last year was. I mean, we had reasonably decent quarterback play last year. It's. I, I mean, we're right there with them. I mean, we're down eight in the fourth quarter of this team that supposedly everybody's like they really whooped us last year. No, they didn't. They got a late touchdown. Um, otherwise, that game was not a blowout. It okay. was. It was. It was a reasonably close game with a bad. Uh, you're a bad signal caller. I'm sorry, but you know, I think Garcia is a significant upgrade. I, I hate the turnover problems he's had. I think you watch Holton when he breaks it down. You understand why did he make this throw? Why did he make that throw? And he's, we got to get him to the point where, hey, man, it's okay to throw the ball out of bounds. He's got that Brett Favre mentality where he thinks he can force it in no matter what the the coverage is. And you saw a post game. He says as much. He yeah, knows it. He it's, knows. It's a matter of applying it you know, <laughs> yeah. when the bullets are coming at you and everything. But, uh, yeah, I like a lot of things he've done. he's done. I am – What'd you say? Flynn had three interceptions. Last year, he's averaging more than that right <laughs> three now. Three and a half. <laughs> yeah. So, can we, one thing we, I always feel bad. We almost ignore the defense on Pirate Radio because they're so steady and so good. You take them for granted. All, exactly. Yeah. All our questions, comments, concerns, yep. and. And and the offensive side is new, but it's all about the offense. And I'm and the thing, Blake Harrell is the nicest defensive coordinator <laughs> I've ever met because we've had we've had a string of them, and, and Greg Hudson included. He, he's one of my boys. I love Greg, but man, he was he was 
tough to work <laughs> with. If you're at practice and you got on your cell phone, Greg would yell at you from across the st- from across the field. Get off the phone. You don't you don't talk on the phone in my office. Did <laughs> like, he have a nickname for you? Like he would call me Smokey because I smelled like cigarette smoke when I you know, talked to him. On the roads, we would go. I'd go hang out in his room and we would talk motorcycles <laughs> of all things. You know, we 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 joke cool about dude. motorcycles. Really cool, laid back dude. I mean, he's really he's intense, but he's also laid back when you, when you're chilling with him. And, but you're you know, right, Blake Harrell is a he's the nicest spoken. Guy, yeah, at yeah. least. And pu- you know, like, to us. like if you ask Greg for an interview outside of, he, he's going to ask you one of two things. You say, "What's this for?" And what do I get? Like, like, <laughs> what am I getting? Am, wow, I, am yeah. I playing golf at Ironwood this week or what? What am I getting? You know? Yeah. And though Blake Carroll's like, "Sure, man, whatever you need, whatever you need." Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and his defense it's is been fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, they're yeah. veterans. They're good. I mean, yeah. up and down that that uh, that unit, you see guys with a play with a with a very fast motor, and I like that. And and uh, Blake and his his passionate you know when he's doing his pregame speech, he gets fiery, and that's when you see that that little intensity, that that all that ball energy in that guy. He's not the biggest guy in the world. No, I mean he's the antithesis of HUD in every way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got the Pirates today? I got the Pirates, man. All I think right. we're going to win this. We're going to win this thing today, and I think um, I think people are going to be surprised at how well we played. And this this is probably the biggest leap. I don't think Garcia is going to turn the ball over. Man, that's a leap. It's a leap. If that happens, I'm definitely willing to say East Carolina's going to win today. Same. Midor, awesome talking with you as always. Always with you, we'll, buddy. Uh, we'll do it again soon. Say when.